Hello everyone, today on Scottish Memories we are chatting to Andy Gray. Hello everyone, hope you are all happy and healthy and safe out there wherever you are. Just before we get started, please remember if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more Scottish Memory interviews. But today, I am over the moon to be chatting to Andy Gray. Andy has been a staple in Scottish comedy and TV for over 35 years. He's appeared in Naked Video, Taggart, City Lights, Boys Unlimited, 2000 Acres of Sky, Doctors, not to mention Ramsey Nisbet, and of course River City, to name but a few. And he's also one third of the incredible Edinburgh Kings trio, along with Grant Stott and Alan Short, who entertain thousands every Christmas. Andy, hello, how are you? Hello, Tony, I'm very well, thank you. My goodness, that was reading off my, my CV there. For goodness sake, I sound like an old, old I'm so grateful that everyone comes on. I just want to big everyone up. Lovely, lovely. Thank you. I've forgotten about most of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's only that's only the highlights. I mean, that IMDb page is a big page. Oh, believe me, there are many lowlights. <laughs> How are you? I'm very well. Thank you very much for inviting me on. I'm, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very pleased to be here, and um, it's nice to see you, albeit through the. Um, the marvel that is uh, Zoom. I know this is this has actually been a godsend to me now yeah. that this has became a thing. Yeah, I was I was shielding, so uh, you know I'm, I'm obviously out of shielding as of this weekend past. But I mean, it was a it really was a ne necessary um, thing for for me because we had you know family quizzes and my partner's family. We had a quiz with them. I had we have a boys' night out with uh, Alan and Grant and Jordan. And picks on Thursday night, so it's been a real, really important link. Because there are times, you know, during that, there were times during that time you could have, you know, that's in one day it melds into another. Really so it's fantastic, it's a great thing. It really, I, I tend to find as well that um, we were watching uh, the landing of the, um, the SpaceX. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, it came on and said, now they've been up there for two months. And me and my wife were like, that's never two months that we watched that. <laughs> and of course, they would sit, they'll be up there, you know, for two months going, I wonder what we're missing on Earth. Nothing. <laughs> we're missing nothing. Nothing's happened. We're all sitting in the exact same place you were. Yeah, when you exactly. I know. <laughs> it's bizarre. It's bizarre. But anyway, we're coming, to, we're coming out of it now. And hopefully, if we're all sensible, that's all of us. Yep. We're all sensible, then we should be all right. Thankfully, we seem to be doing fairly okay. Yeah, I think we're doing okay up in Scotland. I yes. think we are. Doing okay. Uh, I'll, I'll get started. You're a, you're a Glasgow lad. No, I'm not. You're not? Oh, that's a wicked Wikipedia thing. <laughs> you know how Wikipedia, you know, they, they, you look at it, you look at Wikipedia and you go, what? Um, one, they get my age wrong, which is quite good because they actually err on the side of um, my vanity. But uh, they always say Glasgow. I think the Glasgow thing comes from the fact that I did so much in, in the comedy that in BBC Glasgow, but also because I think City Lights was the thing that yeah. caused the Glasgow thing because Chancellor was such a, a, a Glaswegian character. Uh, so I think that people just assumed that it was Glaswegian. So but I've always, I'm from Perth and I live in Schoon now. So um, I am. Um, I always uh, like to tell people because he always asks, he always asks, especially in Glasgow. So, are you a Celtic man or are you a Rangers man? I said, well, St. Johnston. <laughs> that would really confuse people. I remember, remember years ago, Alex McLeish is a big a mate of mine and he was playing for Aberdeen. And Ali McCoyce was a mate of mine. And Rangers and Aberdeen were supposed to be playing on this particular day and it was cancelled. And we all went out for a meal with our. our kind of fiancés and girlfriends at the time and of course people just couldn't work out that me as Chancellor why was I sitting with an Aberdonian player an Aberdeen player and a Rangers player so what side of the fence was I on you know so it was quite good that's well I'm not really on any side of the fence I was gonna I was gonna bring up Satellites and Chancellor a bit later on and I will do but I have to say just straight away because City Lights, um, I mean, that was early 90s, -ish, late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, yeah. And for me, at the age I was, 13, 14 at the time, Chancer was one of the char characters that I was like, he's cool. 
he, he was using the proper line about playing certain things. Well, I mean, I, as it happened, he was the one I would want, wanted to play anyway, and luckily I did. So, because it was a lovely character, you know, because uh, you know there was great gags, and obviously, clearly, you know, Bob Black who wrote it, um, you know, he could come up with lots of lots of different kind of events for um, for Chancellor to get involved in. So there was always something to get your teeth into, you know. Yeah, it was, it was properly an iconic. Sorry about these beeps and things, it's because my phone just went off there and I put it on thingy. Well, I've watched it. Oh, sorry. Apologies. Just to prove it's live. Yeah. <laughs> so, growing up, did you explore Scotland a lot as a kid? Were you yes. Was there a lot of staycations, as they say? Well, yes, I think. I mean, I, I used to. I mean, I, I was born and bred in Perth, which is the gateway to the Highlands. Yeah. So we're, you know, within, within 20, 15 minutes of Perth, you've got Dunkeld and Bootlockery, and you're virtually into the Highlands there, and wonderful hills, Ben Obney, Ben Vrackey, and all that. So we, we were, I, I was a member of the school hill walking club. So every weekend we went walking, and, you know, and that wonderful up Ben Vrackey or Ben Obney, and, and then, you know, down into Dunkeld for fish and chips. And, but uh, so, and my mother was a very keen Scottish historian, so... She always told me tales of things in Scotland, you know, how, how wrong Shakespeare got the, the geography and Macbeth wrong and all that, you know, because there's Burnham Woods there and, and Dunsinane's way up beside Aberdeen and blah, blah, blah. So um, I was always kind of going about the place, you know, we'd go camping. And in Schoon Woods, where I, where I grew up, with, where we had our gang huts, we'd go camping there. And so, yeah, yeah I've, always had, I've always liked a wee staycation. So what was your sort of favourite places to visit then? Um, well, I used to go, I'll tell you where I used to love going, was way up north, just north of Inverness, um, the Black Isle. Right. Um, Rosemarkey and Fortrose and Cromarty and all that. My, my uncle and aunt had a house up there, and right on the Murray Firth, and my uncle was a keen uh, sailor, so he had a little flying 15, he had a bigger boat, so I used to go on that, look, you see the dolphins, watch the powerboat racing go around the point, um, and, you know, visit where the seer of Kintail was burned, you know, the great kind of um, seer. So I mean, they, they, were, they were magical holidays. Yeah. Uh, and my uncle worked for the uh, for Scottish, I think it was hydroelectric at the time. So he was forever going into places like Glen Affric and, you know, going across the chasms and checking pipes and all that. So, I, you know, I used to go with him and it was, it was magical. And of course, the, the kind of Black Isle is a kind of magical wee place. It's so beautiful. It's one of those places I still, visit, yeah, I still go as much as I can now. It's one of those places that I've never really managed to get up. But I just popped into my head when you're talking about sort of growing up in Perth. You were Perth is one of those places that actually it's not a long journey to get to anywhere in Scotland, really. It's a great sort of fantastic. I mean, that's, I, I, I've lived in Edinburgh and Glasgow and London, and uh, but I came back to Perth some years ago and I live in Scudden now, which is just outside Perth. But it's easy for me, you know, it's 50 minutes and a good day to get to Edinburgh, an hour and a bit to Glasgow, and you're Dundee's 20 minutes away, and it's just, I mean, it's a, it's a great area. I mean, that's one of the reasons, I mean, that's how it can originate. It was a market town, so all the farmers from north and from Fife and that used to come to the Perth market uh, and sell their, sell their wares. So, I mean, it was a central area. Uh, but Perth's, Perth's kind of, it's got, it's got everything you need, really. Yeah. So if you want to be living in Scotland and you want to be just slightly off the beaten track, it's yeah, very Perth, slightly off the beaten track. We at Perth, one of those places that um, me and my wife always seem to end up at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> one, yeah. People, well, people, if they didn't take the ring road on their way to Aberdeen or whatever, or the, you know, going up the A9 up to Inverness, you know, it's a lot of people just stop in Perth for a while. And, it, you know, it has got, it's got everything. And of course, it's got a lot of history in itself. You know, Schoon Palace, where the, the, you know, the kings and queens used to be crowned right up until about, the I think it was the 14th century. So, I mean, it's got a lot of history. It's good palace now. It's still beautiful. In fact, my daughter and my granddaughter were up at the weekend. and I, We went to Schoon Palace. The, the, the building itself is not open just now because of COVID. But the grounds are open, you know, with the peacocks wandering about. And it was just beautiful. Oh. So um, we're very lucky here. And, you know, Perth's got a lot of history. The Romans were here. Um, and then um, uh, the you know the, the, it was a very strong market town. There was a harbour, a working harbour, because the, the boats, boats, ships used to get right up to Perth Harbour at one point before it all silted up. 
Yeah, it's funny. I'm the only really, the, the, you know how you've always got one big memory of a place. For me, visiting Perth, my, I remember one day, I could only have been about nine or ten, and um, my two aunts, my dad's two sisters, decided to say, oh, we'll take him out for a day. Go and use have a day off. We'll take him out. And they jumped in the car, and we drove to Perth. We found a wee cafe, had beans on toast, and drove back. And that was the day. <laughs> Ah, excellent. I wonder if it was Del Pippo's. Was that a wee Italian cafe? Can you remember that? I, 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 can, I can really only remember the colour of it, that it was kind of a, a sort of off-white and red on the outside. And that's all I can remember. Well, because I remember we used to, the places we used to hop were the cafe, was the Cafe Marie and Del Pippo's um, Italian wee cafe. So it was worth it, though, was it? The beans and toast would be good. As far as I can remember, you, but you can't go wrong with beans and toast, really, can you? <laughs> Here's another thing that actually popped in my head in your chat that you might find interesting. I went to drama school in London many, many moons ago, and uh, there was a guy called uh, Rick Lipton who was our accent coach. And this just popped in my head when you're talking about Shakespeare getting things wrong. Then we were in an accent class one day, and uh, one of the class went, "In Shakespeare's time, what do you think the accent sounded like?" Because he was an expert on all these things, and he studied. Uh, yeah. quite a lot and he said if I'm being 100% truthful he goes I think Tony I think then it sounded more like what the Edinburgh accent sounds like now yeah oh well interesting, interesting. yeah I found that quite interesting whether he's right or not I don't know yeah. but he's, you know he knows his stuff so. oh yeah absolutely absolutely of course for years and years Shakespeare was always done in RP and that's what I think put people off so you know yeah. but I think the iambic pentameter lends itself to the Scottish accent anyway yeah, we're, we're David, quite, David Tennant proved that right. I think we're quite lyrical, especially the Glasgow accent. That's almost yeah, yeah. yeah the Glasgow's very, I mean, the Glasgow's a, a very sing sorry thing, isn't it? But I think the Perth accent's lovely. <laughs> no bias on there at all. <laughs> um, so uh, I mean, you've been uh, doing plays up and down the country, and some proper, you know, uh, Scottish. Uh, shows uh, with uh, you did you played uh, with Jared Kelly a few times around the country. Was there any places where, when you're doing a tour, that you go, "Oh, great! I love it when we go there." Well, I mean, I, we, yeah, I mean, we, when we used to tour, um, we used to, it used to be great because we'd always have to always you always had to find the place with the, with the best high tea, you know. So um, and high teas, unfortunately, I think they're kind of gone out of fashion now. But we always had a place with that did a mixed grill or. Haddock and chips, or uh, you know, liver and onions. Um, but you had that with that. Also, did the cake stand with the cakes and the scones and the pancakes and all that. You're and it was found anywhere. And the Tudor Tea Rooms in Air was uh, one of our favourites because right. they did they did mince with chips with a fried egg on top of the mince. <laughs> and but they were great. And we used to always go to find places for high teas. But I mean, the one that Kelly and I did. The Odd Couple as a tour. That was the one I was thinking of, actually. Yeah. And we, we opened in St Andrews. So we rehearsed in St Andrews. So Kelly and I had a flat together in St Andrews for about six, seven weeks. And it was just a joy. Beautiful. You know, so, we, you know, a lovely place to stay and then to open the show. And, of course, you'd find out. We'd, we'd travel to Crail to get the fish and chips and the and Anstruther and, and all these beautiful, you know, right, the, the, the Fife Coast, absolutely gorgeous. In fact, Kelly, being a creature of habit as he was, I mean, every night I would say, oh, listen, I've got some such and such and I'll cook that. And he would go, no, it's fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And he went to Crail nearly every night and got fish and chips. Really? Yeah, and he would sit in his car somewhere along the coast. And I mean, Sanders was great. But, you know, that's one of the great things about being an actor, uh, especially in Scotland, you're know, touring, is you get to visit some great places and, and some wonderful theatres. There's great great historical theatres here, you know, Aberdeen and Glasgow have got the, the Moss Empire and Edinburgh have got the Moss Empire as kings, kind of, all that. Uh, but, the, you know, there's some great theatres and, and great audiences. I mean, we, Grant and I, have, we've always toured our fringe shows after the event, usually the following year. And it's always a, it's always a great fun. I mean, going down to Peebles and, you know, the Peebles audience is just fantastic. You know, it's always, it's just great. The variety is fantastic. Funny you mentioned the fringe actually, because obviously it should be starting now. Well, we should have opened by now. Were, were, did you? Were you guys planned to play this year again? Yeah, we've got all. We're actually working on it now. 
Uh, we, we would have been doing it, um, but obviously nobody's doing anything. So we're doing a play um, that we're, um, I think we have announced it, yes. It's a basic, I, I, was, I was ill for a couple of years, so I had uh, leukemia and I got a transplant and things. So we're based on, not me, but the story around that. Right. Uh, and you know, it's, there's a lot of laughs in it as well. It's not just a kind of, it's a bit, it's, it's not a, a medical drama. Um, anyway, we've, got, we've called it Chemo Savvy. Oh. And it's about two brothers and all that. One has to be a donor and things and them growing up and them as kids playing Lone Ranger and that's hence, hence Chemo Savvy, Chemo Savvy. So that's what we've been doing. So the great thing is I keep saying to Alan McHugh's writing it, I keep saying to Grant and Alan, I said, this is great because we've got a whole year to work on this. You know, so by the time we open, if you know people don't love it, then we're in trouble because we'll we'll have had lots of time to work on it. It's funny we're the, we Scots we've got a funny dark humour in that sort of way. We can always yeah. find humour in in darker situations. I think I think I think people will kind of respond to it. Um, I mean, I I've told my doctors and various nurses because I still go for things. I'm going in fact I'm going to the hospital tomorrow, but I go and see them a lot. So I I, I mean I've told them all about it. And they, th they think it's a great idea because, you know, there's, there's so much, mo you know, there's so much people don't know, you know, about, you know, it's, it, you know, people don't like to talk about cancer a lot of the time. Uh, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm testing to the fact that the NHS were, um, cured me, basically. And I got a transplant and I was looked after absolutely magnificently. So I'm, I think that's what we want to do. We want to get across that, you know, there's, uh, it's all about how it affects relationships, you know, and, and, and the, the, you know, there are frightening times and there's harrowing times with it and all that, but it's all about, um, it's like everything else in life, there's, every, everything's a journey. So yeah. it's, we're, just, we're just showing a small part of a journey, which at, at times it was like very daunting, but you know, it's over. Yeah, no, I, I think that's brilliant. Especially, you're right about the talking about things, because uh, actually uh, last week I was chatting to a Scottish actress called uh, Romana Abercrombie, and her and her husband... Romana uh, Abercrombie? Yeah, Romana Abercrombie. I know her. How do I know her? She she's, uh, does a lot of theatre, a lot of plays around the country, so you possibly worked with her. Um, but her and her husband run a podcast about infertility, which they've had an issue with, and it's... Right. Yeah. And it's like, it's great that all these things go on to just, because we don't talk about these things enough. No, whether we, well, I think there are things we don't talk about. And also that's the problem when we go into something like, you know, uh, treatment for cancer, because we don't tend to ask. I mean, I asked everything. And I was very lucky because my consultants would tell me everything. And, uh, and a lot of the times people, even, it was amazing how people around me, how, how different, differently people reacted. Yeah. Some people would kind of go, oh, well, that's, oh, well, we'll be looking after you and asking questions about it. So people would, you know, very little. They wouldn't kind of, they wouldn't want to, you know, they thought they were being nosy if they asked me questions about it, you know. So there were bits, and I think they're protecting themselves. Because we do, as soon as we hear the word, the big C, people go, oh, right. Uh, and it is frightening, you know, as soon as you start thinking about cancer, you, you start thinking about chemo and chemo, you know. I mean, my, you know, it's, I was terrified before I went in, but I was, you know, talked through it wonderfully and then it was it was actually it was great <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't great it wasn't great but it was absolutely pimps the main thing is you're healthy i'm healthy i'm ready to go i mean, so I, after two years of a bit of isolation i was ready to go and then i had to self-isolate yeah so but no i'm ready to go now ready to go because uh, you had to take a year off the panto which kind of yeah yeah a year off and then came back last year and then, then we did Alan's show, Alan's variety show and we did that right we, and the Saturday we finished, the Monday they closed the theatre. Yeah, I don't, when I was um, with Alan, he said that, like he j just got it in by the skin. Just, just of course we were going around going, what's this about this COVID thing? And we're all kind of joking, kind of banging elbows and all that stuff and then, you know, and then the next week, oh my goodness, that was it. The King's Panto, I mean, it's properly, uh, obviously, the King's in Edinburgh. It's yep. properly, like, it's in people's heart. You guys have been doing it for a long time now. The three oh, yeah. I mean, it, I, think that's, I mean, I think that's the reason we're still there is because the audience have got so used to us, but also like, and we're all, we're part of the, the end of the year celebrations, I think, for a lot of people. And we're part of the furniture. I, mean, I think we're just, we're a bit like the, 
you know, the Christmas log fire and the Christmas tree and the selection boxes and there's us. Um, nice. but I think that's, and the, the audience, the Edinburgh audience have just, are just wonderful. I mean, they, they are so loyal and, you know, we go out to do it and we have, there's a great feeling that they want it to be good as well. Yeah. You know, they really want it to be good. So they, they're kind of willing you on. And, you know, if a gag doesn't work, you know, the first few days as we're kind of playing things, trying things out, you know, we'll mention it and we'll go, well, that's it. Nobody will ever see that one again. <laughs> so there's all that. So, no, the, the, it's amazing. And we, we love it. You know, it's great. Um, um, and we'll see what happens this year. I know what I was about to say, because it's, it's kind of right now, right, it's discussions yeah. being had, isn't it? I think, I think they're going to, in the next couple of days, there's going to be announcements made, but we really don't know. Um, we're hoping that we can do something. Yeah. Uh, but it all depends. And, you know, you see every day, Tony, it's like, you know, there's news every day that there's a surge there or a peak there or something. Um, so hopefully... By the time we get to November, December, when we'd be moving in, that um, somebody would then kudos who the production company. They're still, they're obviously still looking at it to see if there's what, what they can do. You know, in my younger more uh, days when I was performing more on stage, panto was one of the things I love to do. I'd, like many, it was my first professional job. Yeah, and, uh, panto. Well, and- I, mean, I, I mean, that's why I'm an actor. I went to Perth Theatre a lot when I was a kid. My grandpa used to take me and my mum. To take me in. and um, I remember the first time I saw Panto, and um, it was the comic. And I think if I can remember, I mean, I was, I was seeing people like Jimmy Logan and all that, and, and we travelled to Edinburgh to see Stanley and Ricky and Jack and all that. But I remember, and I, I think it was an actor who is sadly no longer with us, Phil McCall, and he was the comic. And I remember sitting there going, "That's what I want to do." Mm. I want to be I want to be the idiot because the idiot gets all the laughs and yeah. you can actually you know it's, it looks like it's fun so that was it so any ideas of wanting to play Hamlet or James Bond or anything went out the window I wanted to be the idiot in Panto and I got my wish because <laughs> I'm a big idiot but it is it must be nice uh, to be in something that's that's thought of so warmly by yeah. my yeah. it must be lovely. It's lovely. It's a really, it's a really great thing. I think what we do is with the Kings, we sh- it's basically a shared experience yeah. with the audience, you know, uh, and, you know, they're, they're very familiar with us. And some of the times if we, we do a gag that we've maybe done a couple of times before, they're very familiar with some of the material, which is, but in a way that's not a bad thing either, you know, um, but we, we try, we try, we do try to freshen it all the time and try to change it and up the ante on certain things. And of course, we're very lucky in that, you know, they, they, we've got one of the best crews in the world and the most, most beautiful theatres, but also kudos, they chuck a bit of money at it. So the effects are great. And, you know, there's all that, with, you know, there's beautiful costumes. I mean, amazing costumes and sets. So we're very lucky. It's a lot, it's, you know, there's a lot of elements that makes it, you know, a nice wee Christmas jaunt. Yeah. And when you're when you doing it, obviously you've got the, the cor- your chorus members and things come from all over the country. So a lot of yeah. them- the first time in Edinburgh, the first time in Scotland. Is there ever places where you sort of say, oh, you should go there, you should go oh, there? I mean, they, they all do it. They all find that, you know, especially, especially with the very few days we have off. I mean, they, they'll, they'll all, most of them will always make their way to the castle. And they'll always, you know, they always, we always recommend that we rest in here, we rest in there. They'll, they'll do the, the, you know, that the winter garden thing. Uh, I mean, they always find places to, to you know, and I, I'm, you know, I always recommend you know, the, the museum and National Portrait Gallery and all that. It says you've got to take all that in. There's fantastic stuff. So they do. And, they, and every one of them, they all say, in fact, our director, Ed Curtis, he, uh, he's he been doing it now with us for the last seven years. I think he, first, the first year I remember him saying, he just, he just walked everywhere. He just thought it was the most beautiful city. You know, and I think that it was one particular year, it was sun shining constantly for right through the rehearsals in the opening week. And he just loved it. He was walking everywhere he could. And uh, and Edinburgh is, I mean, it's an amazing setting when you are you don't come from Edinburgh and you arrive there to do panto and you've got all that on your doorstep. It's fantastic. It's one of the things that, that, that I always regret, that I, um, I never got to play one of the big Edinburgh theatres. You know, I never got to play the King yeah. Festival or the Playhouse. And I'm always oh, like... Oh. I mean, the great thing about King's Edinburgh is, 
it's a nice big theatre, but it's about 1,500 seats. So, you know, so a lot of people get to see it. I think we 90,000 people see us at Christmas, but it still feels very intimate. You know, you can, you can hear a pin drop. The, the acoustics, I mean, it was built for days before microphones, so the acoustics yeah. are just beautiful. It used to have it's a great level, didn't it? I think there's got three yeah, levels. It used to have, it used to have where, where what we call the gods now wasn't the gods. That was the upper upper balcony, and then there was gods. So there was an extra extra. But that I mean, I've seen photographs of that. Honestly, you'd have to take an oxygen cylinder and you'd have to take crampons to stay up there. I would never watch a show from up there. I mean, all you'd see if they came to see us <coughs> to sit up there now would be my baldy heat, really. And because I mean, you're you're almost looking directly down. Yeah, they were they were truly cheap seats. Yeah, yeah. But then a lot of theatres are like that. A lot, you know, it's yeah. side entrance up you go. You can sit up there and just yeah, exactly. It's, it's great. It's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, I think that I think it was a whole health and safety issue many years ago that they said they can't they can't put people up there. <laughs> There's probably still people wandering about up there just now. Yeah. Well, because they couldn't find their way down the bar. <laughs> you've got the thing and I, I was going to come back to it anyway but obviously you, you did Naked Video and um, City Lights and, and Grab as well but like those uh, those two Naked Video and City Lights I mean those were properly ingrained for me yeah. in, in my teenage years and things that was a big part of growing up in Scotland so do you still get a lot of that coming back to you now? Oh yeah I mean I, do, I mean I mean I, no I mean I think it's still, it's still very much, I'm still very much aware of them, personally speaking, in my career. You know, naked video and say lights, because they're, they're such a large, large part. But, I mean, people do still talk about Chancer, you know. Yeah. And, you know, it's amazing. Some adults will go, look, you know who that is? And to their children, who because children go, well, they've never even seen it. So, I mean, the, you know, I do, I do, uh, I do, I mean, Chancer still, I mean, in fact, Grant and I were rehearsing in Edinburgh a couple of years ago for the, for the fringe in Glasgow, and then um, you know, I would walk down the street. People, because I was doing River City at the time, so people were going, "Hey, Big Pete, Pete Galloway, how you doing, man?" And then, of course, some people on the other side were going, "Chance, are you right, Chance up?" So that was, you know, thirty odd years after we finished. So yeah. people, uh, it, it was. I mean, like like we talked about there about the Edinburgh audience taking you to their hearts. It was a bit like that with City Lights and Naked Video, you know, because there were. You know, there hadn't been a sitcom in Scotland since Para Handy, and then we did City Lights, and then a Naked Video, uh, that came from Naked Radio, which is a very peculiar Scottish thing for us that we, we did every week. So they were very Scottish institutions. And, you know, Naked Video, it was, it was amazing success. You know, it got huge ratings. I mean, Johnny Watson was on the radio the other week, and he was saying, you know, we used to beat, we used to beat Coronation Street and things when we were on, you know, it was like incredible. It was great fun. Oh, I don't know. So, so I was chatting to uh, Gordon Kennedy. A few. Oh, yeah. yeah. He mentioned it. So cause obviously they were doing absolutely, roughly, roughly about the same. Yeah, I, think we were, I think we were about two or three series ahead, I think. Because cause Jack and Murray, they were in absolutely. Yeah. The right for naked video as well. So, and of course, when, when absolutely took off, they just gave all their best stuff to absolutely and left us. <laughs> Not better at all. <laughs> Vic Reeves and Bob Mortimer and people writing for us. Really? Oh, I didn't because it, it was one of those programs that when I was when I was young, it was it was it was kind of like the same as my Billy Connolly LP. It was oh. something you'd watch. Yeah. Let my mom and dad see that I was watching naked. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was always a wee bit risky. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I watch, I, I see it now from time to time on YouTube, or someone put someone something up on Facebook. I mean, it's like watching my grandson now. Because I've you know I've got a full head of hair and I was you know I was slightly less jolly. I was still jolly. And I I lost my hair a long 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 time ago. <laughs> no, I'm I'm basically I don't I mean I haven't I'm not getting a cut but because I've got wee wee after effects from my treatment now that I, I use that as an excuse to go I've got a wee touch of alopecia but it's just I'm losing it just losing it. But it's been an ongoing thing. It's been I've been losing it for about thirty years. I started losing mine when I, I was I'm trying to kid myself on. I can go that. Oh, that looks all right. If I walked around like that in half light, I'd be fine. I, I, I unfortunately started losing mine in my early twenties. So about yeah, eventually when I was early. Thirties, you, you've you've got you've bought right into it though. It's good. I, 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 I don't, it's, it's funny, like you had the you had the baldy man on. Thank you. Just, 
Do oh, that wow. sort of thing. I was like, I can't yeah, do that. yeah. You're, you're sporting that kind of upside down heat look. Yeah, yeah. It just it depends what mood I'm in. I just turn it. <laughs> it works. So, what sort of top tips would you have for? Because, like, as I was mentioning before, we we started. There's a lot of expats uh, watch the channel. A lot of people with heritage. What sort of top tips would you have for people coming over? Well, I think you know, it's you've got to see the old country. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, like, for example, if you're uh, Canadians, I mean, you know, there's so many places in Canada that are named after places here and in Australia and in the States. Um, but I think if you, 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 you can't whack it. I mean, you know, we're talking about, you know, the new world. We're talking about Canada, Australia and, and the USA. Uh, but we are, you know, we are, you know, our history goes right back to pre-Roman. Uh, you know, and in and, and, and Scotland itself, I've just finished doing a wee course about Hadrian's Wall with Newcastle University. And it's got me into looking at Roman camps near here. And there's one Ardocker near here, which is about five miles from Schoon. So there's all that, there's this great, there's prehistory, there's history, there's amazing kind of stories. Um, uh, and you know, there's all the whole story of destiny thing, Kate Barlas, the Gowrie conspiracy, all these things, Mary Queen of Scots, Loch Leven, all that. So there's there's everything. There's I mean, there's I think if you came to Scotland, it would be like opening a beautiful virtual reality history book. It's got everything for you. It's funny when I because uh, I do a lot of videos where um, I show off Edinburgh or surrounding areas, and I just go and if I come across a building that's like two hundred odd years old. I do find myself going, that's only about 200 years old. Because obviously we've got, like, St. Margaret's Chapel and the castle's almost exactly. yeah. I mean, And I forget that a lot, of, you know, like America, it's only 250 coming up for 300. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, the amazing that you look at Edinburgh, I mean, you know, the fact, you know, the his, Edinburgh's history is just extraordinary and, and how it kept reinventing itself and, you know, and how the fact that most of it's still there. All these different elements of history are still in Edinburgh. It's fantastic. I did a day once where I just I just traced the route of the flooded wall. Oh yeah, find as many bits as possible. I had so much fun because I deliberately just I, I roughly knew where it was, but I didn't look them up. Yeah. I yeah. just wanted to trace it. There's a bit, there's a bit that's still very obvious. Is it in the grass market? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you yeah. just go up, just off for the grass market. Yeah, I mean it's amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. I mean, I, I I I used to live in town in Perth, and we were just around the corner from. Uh, Blackfriars, where Blackfriars, used to, Blackfriars Monastery was. Yeah. And, and of course, just beyond that was where the Perth Harbour Wall was and then the Perth City Wall. Because there was more, you know, the, the tape was wider because they used it for a lot more, you know, bringing goods into Perth and things. Yeah. And of course, around the, the corner from there is where the Gowrie conspiracy was, where James III, I think, was murdered and all that stuff. So it's quite incredible. Everywhere has got, I mean, that's why I would say to everybody, you've got to, if you're an expat, you've got to see the old country. And just, and just get a direct flight to Scotland. Don't go, don't go to Luton and then drive and get the trip. Just come, just come into Edinburgh, Glasgow. Straight to us. We're here waiting for you. <laughs> exactly. uh, I'm going to finish off with what I like to call difficult choice questions, sir. Oh, my God. Uh, so this is, this, is, this is where, you know, this is where we really find out what you're made of. Uh, shortbread or tablet? Tablet. Oh, before that was straight in there. Oh, tablet. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm actually, I'm, a bit of a hobby of mine is to sample tablet. And I do it as a kind of, I say I'm a professional tample, ta tablet sampler because, you know, I can ask for extra tablet, you know, functions and things. And so, no, yeah, tablet every time. Although I make a mean shortbread myself that I learned during lockdown. But definitely tablet. I'm, I'm rubbish at making both. We have tried and we well, have... I wouldn't even... I mean, I grant my, my, my grandparents and my, were brilliant at making tablet, but I've never attempted it. But um, I'd eat it till the cows come home. It really is a grandparent thing, isn't it? Making okay. tablet and making okay. things. Because my... It was my grandpa Gray that used to do the tablet. He didn't cook anything else at all. Uh, but tablet was his, his department. Yeah. I, did, I, did, I never realised till I tried to make it how... You know, the stirring... Oh, the oak arms like it's far too butch for me <laughs> we had we'd got uh, given um a, a gift a couple of days ago and it had tablet and it were like oh great lovely but it was sea salt tablet that i'd never tried before it was lovely was it 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, sometimes it can be a little bit too sweet. If it, oh, yeah. And it just offset it just a little bit. It was nice. You said the whole thing. I mean, really, I just want to know that this is butter and sugar in a slab. Thank you. Which is essentially all it is. <laughs> uh, iron brew or whiskey? Iron brew. Yeah. Well, I prefer, I'm, I'm not a whiskey drink. I worked in Globes, used to make grouse whiskey. I worked there for one summer. And um, if you work in a blending house for two, three months, it fair puts you off drinking whiskey for the rest of your life. Because well, smell, it's smell is it? just awful. And uh, I got very drunk one night on whiskey as well, around about the same time. So they both combined to make sure I didn't drink whiskey again. And Iron Brew, I like it with Iron Brew now and then. I think there's something funny about the first time you have a bad hangover. Yeah. Whatever it was that gave you that first bad hangover, you're like, oh, no. Nah. Like that with whiskey, and I like that with, and then, then I say, Perno. Perno. Because I remember having Perno once and thinking, this is the drink of the future. This is what I want for the rest of my life. It's minty, it's lovely, it makes you feel fresh. And of course, um, it didn't do me any good. My, my one is Chad Daniels. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 when I, my birthday one year, um, I, my, eight, my 18th actually, which, which of course was the first time I ever drank alcohol. Of course, of course it was, yes, 18, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and my cousin, my older cousin came to uh, my, my 18th birthday party and he goes, I've not got you anything, but every now and again, let's just go, because it was, it, was it was a minors club, so it had a wee sidebar. Ah, right, yeah. Every now and again, you just, you just come with me. So every now and again, we'd nip away and we'd have a wee shot at Jack Daniels, which was fine. It was the next night when my two best mates at the time said, we're doing a pub crawl. I went, okay. So we did um, a pint and a shot in every pub. Now, I didn't really know shots. I, didn't really, I hadn't really done shots. So I just did Jack Daniels again. And unbeknownst to me, my two best mates were having a pint and a shot of water and giving me... Jack Daniels. Oh, no, that's very poor behaviour, that. Very dodgy. That was, that was my first bad hangover. I was like, that's oh, very man. dodgy, that. Very yeah. dodgy. Are they still mates of yours? Uh, I haven't seen them in years, actually. Well, 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 for good I, the funny thing is, I do remember, I actually remember the, most of the night, but I do remember when we, we ended up at a rugby club and um, going to them, because they were, not only that, they were getting me doubles when it was my round. Sorry, when it was their round. Oh. And I do remember going to them. How come when I go at the bar, I get these little rubbishy glasses, and when you go, you get these lovely big glasses? Yeah. <laughs> no idea. No. Oh, dear God. No, no, no. I remember at the Lyceum Theatre many, many years ago. I was doing a few plays there. And I, I said to the barman one night, do you know how to make a long hand iced tea? And he said, I think so. And I said, well, I do. So, of course, I went back to the bar and made the... You know, it's gin, tequila, Bacardi, um, there's about seven spirits in it. But of course, they're cocktail size spirit measures. Yeah. But of course, I was putting in, you know, 50. And I mean, it was, uh, they were potent. I think I basically gave alcohol poisoning to the entire company. <laughs> and we had a matinee the next day. Yeah, that would have been a fun show. <laughs> oh. uh, square sausage or black pudding? Black pudding. Stornoway Black Pudding. In well, particular, that is my... Charles, Charles McLeod, Stornoway Black Pudding. Definitely. Superb. And of course, sometimes, be careful of anybody coming to Scotland, sometimes they'll put Stornoway Black Pudding on the breakfast menu, and they'll say Stornoway Black Pudding. Sometimes it isn't. And I've caught a couple of places out. I said, this is Stornoway, and they, have to, they eventually have to admit that. <laughs> That seems like a random thing to... Is it, is it that well-known a black pudding that they would steal the name? Oh, yes. Oh, well, I think, I think because everybody knows it tastes good. And they think, well, I've put a in front of it. People will go, oh, I've heard of Stormy Black Pudding. Oh, yeah. If you, know, if you like black pudding, you're going to be aware of Stormy Black Pudding. See, I only, just, I only just recently started to like black pudding. I didn't like it when I was young. And it's only recently I was having a fry-up when I was starving. You know, it's a superfood. Sorry? It's a superfood. Black pudding. Well, that makes sense, being what it's made of. Yeah. 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 It's a superfood. And it's very, very good for you. Haggis, haggis, neeps and tatties, or mints and tatties? Mints and tatties. Not a haggis fan? I love haggis, 
I like Haggis a lot, but I would certainly, you know, if I was to, to choose it, it would be Vincent Titus. And, you know, I've, 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 I've spent all my life trying to mimic how my granny made Mr. Tatties. And I'm, I'm slowly getting there. I'm slowly getting there. It's all in the slow cooking and the amount of ingins you put in it. Yeah, I was uh, chatting to, uh, I got a, a girl from America reached out to me who was on the American Bake Off, American version of Bake Off. And she had a website and she was just, she'd watched the channel and she was reaching out just looking for Scottish recipes. Yeah. And she goes, things that, you know, that, that's a, a traditional Scottish recipe that people might not know about. And I was like, you've got to put mince and tatties on there. Yeah. It's very Scottish, but, you know, a lot of restaurants won't sort of, you know, all mince and tatties because it just seems like a very home thing. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's a very, it's kind of, it's soul food. But at the same time, it's a, it's a lot, I think it's a other national dish. I mean, Ur Willy, I mean, when you're wee, you're around Ur Willy. And uh, he, his mum would shout him in for his tea. And, you know, and Dudley Watkins used to draw the most amazing plate of mince and tatties with the steam coming off it. I mean, it was just, and he just made you, oh, wonderful. It so, doesn't mean you're growing up. Ma, and and it's, the thing is with mince and tatties as well, there's no one set recipe. It's how your mum did it. Or you, yes, yes, exactly. And it's, you've got to, you know, do you put, yeah, you put leaf and in it. Yeah, a bit of pepper in you know, But let it cook slowly and just let it. And, then you, and sometimes you could put the tatties in with it, let the tatties just cook with it. But I mean, it's mince and mashed tatty. Oh, wonderful. I might have that. Uh, last but by no means least. Go ahead. Last but by no means least. Tunnock's tea cakes or caramel wafers? I would have to go for Tunnock's tea cakes. Yeah. Because Alan Stewart always eats them. And if I didn't fancy it, I'd have to take it over there. I know that he would take it because that's his interval. That's where he has it an interval. He's probably told you that. Yeah, he actually mentioned that the year that you were off, you sent him a big box of Tunnix oh, tea Yes, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, no, Tunnix tea cakes, definitely. And they're good. They're good. And are you one of these people, the, the, the tin foil that comes off, do you roll it or do you have to flatten it out? Well, I'll tell you what Alan Stewart does. He rolls them up, puts them in his dressing gown pocket, and then usually on the last matinee of the last show, um, he empties out his pockets all over my, because I'm a bit OCD, Mr. Tidy, right. and he usually leaves me a wee, he just empties all these tunics wrappers and leaves them all lying in my place because he knows it'll freak me out. <laughs> so what I tend to do is I collect them, put them in my bag, and then my bag gets taken to the, one of the storerooms until the next year, and then on the first day that we go move into our dressing rooms, I get the wrappers out of my bag and put them all over his dressing room. <laughs> the childish things we do to keep ourselves occupied. Yeah, 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 we've all been there. Andy, this has been absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much for sparing the time. Thank you very much. It was lovely. It's lovely to talk to you, and uh, it's lovely to talk about Scotland in the theatre and Edinburgh and everything. It was great. Thank oh, you very know, much. I might reach out to you to have another chat at some point. Excellent. No problem. Just any time. You've got my, you've got my details. And look after yourself. Same to you, Tori. Cheers. Wasn't that nice chatting to Andy there? Thank you so much to Andy again for sparing his time and chatting to us. Massive thing for me, as you may have guessed there, because growing up watching City Lights and watching Naked Video was a big part of my youth. So to have the chance to chat and share those memories with Andy was genuinely lovely. Um, hope you've enjoyed that. As always, if you have, please remember to hit that subscribe button. Remember to leave a comment, leave a like if you haven't already. But till next time, bye humans. Thank you.